What up Fortnite fam, it's your boy Matt back again to bring you the latest and greatest tips and tricks to help you become a better Fortnite player. Chapter 3 Season 3 is finally here. Although there hasn't been too many significant weapon pull changes other than the addition of the two shot shotgun and the hammer assault rifle, you need to make sure you're using the most optimal and up to date settings if you want to be successful in the new season. Luckily for you, in today's video we're going to be showing you guys the best keyboard and mouse settings to dominate the new meta. With the pump shotgun now being vaulted for three consecutive seasons, there's not really much hope left for its highly requested return. Yes, the striker shotgun has recently seen a buff on the body and headshot damage, but they still can't one-shot full health opponents. On top of this, the combat and stinger SMGs remain completely unchanged and powerful as always. This means that for the time being, the spray meta is here to stay. And if you haven't learnt your lesson from the previous seasons, you need to have your aim on point if you want to dominate the spray meta. Although there are some outliers, a general rule of thumb is that you want to lower your sensitivity, because then it'll be easier for you to hit your shots. You obviously don't want to set it so low to the point where building and editing becomes a hassle, but keeping your X and Y sensitivities anywhere around 6-8% is likely your best bet. Of course, there will always be some players who find themselves hitting more shots on a higher sensitivity, but for an SMG based fighting meta like this one, a sensitivity that you can easily control will allow you to be much more consistent. As far as your ADS or aim down sight sensitivity goes, it's pretty much personal preference. We've seen pro players use anything from 15 to a full 100%. We personally recommend staying on that lower side. Anywhere around 30 to 60% will probably work great. Having your ADS sensitivity set low will decrease the chances of you over flicking when tracking from the medium and long range, and will overall give you more control of your crosshair. Since you're not going to be ADSing very often from the close range, you can prioritize your long range tracking when choosing your sensitivity. Your scope sensitivity is pretty similar to the ADS in the sense that it's mainly personal preference. In our opinion, the middle range around 50 or 60% seems to be the sweet spot. Now that we've got your sensitivities out of the way, let's make sure your building keybinds are up to par. There hasn't been any changes made to building this season, but we still want to show you guys what it means to have optimal binds for those of you who still haven't got it. Your main goal when deciding on your keybinds should be to minimize how often you'll need to take your fingers off of the basic movement keys WASD. Doing this will allow you to move around freely while building with whatever pieces you desire. If you have a mouse with at least two side buttons, you're in luck. Almost all of the pros today are binding two of their building keybinds to their side buttons. This makes it so you only need to bind two building keys on your actual keyboard, and makes room for your other binds. We usually see most players binding their wall and ramp to their mouse, as these are the most frequently used building pieces and will make 90s a piece of cake. For your cone and floor binds, using shift along with another key that won't be hit with your WASD fingers like X, C or V is the most optimal. These keys can all be hit with your thumb, so feel free to try them all out and see what works best for you. Once you've got those key binds down, and if you want to take your gameplay to the next level, make sure you head over to ProGuides.com, where we've got an army of pro coaches ready and waiting to teach you everything you need to know about Fortnite so you can improve fast. If you were able to bind two of your building binds onto your mouse, then you should have plenty of options left for your editing keybind. There isn't one key that works better than others when it comes to editing, as it's pretty much personal preference. However, we typically see most pros using either E, F or G. All of these keys can be hit with your index finger and are pretty easy to be pressed rapidly. You should try out these binds and maybe even some others to see what feels most comfortable for you, but we wouldn't recommend using a bind that would require your pinky finger as it's pretty difficult to spam click with it. We're sure by now that the majority of you guys watching this video are familiar with the scroll wheel reset, 
but we do still want to go over it briefly for those of you who aren't. By default, to reset a building edit, you would need to hit your edit bind, right click your mouse and then confirm the edit. If you want to speed this process up significantly, go ahead and set your secondary edit bind to scroll wheel down. After this, set your secondary reset bind to scroll wheel down as well. These binds combined will make your building edits reset instantly once you scroll down while your crosshair is on the building piece. Being able to instantly reset multiple binds in under a second is a huge advantage for keyboard players, as those using a controller will still need to perform a three bind sequence for every build they reset. Definitely give a scroll wheel reset a shot if you haven't already. All right, now that we've gone over all of the best editing keybinds, we should probably talk about confirm edit on release. Confirm edit on release has been in the game for quite some time now, so we've been able to gather a good bit of information on whether their setting is worth it or not. When this setting is enabled, your building edits will be confirmed instantly after releasing your left click instead of having to hit your edit bind to finish it off. This means that double and triple edits can be performed much quicker, but this does come with a cost. You see, when you have confirm edit on release enabled, you need to keep your crosshair on the last tile that you selected. This means you're not going to be able to set yourself up with proper crosshair placement when editing onto an opponent to take a shot. This can really make it more difficult to hit your shots and will require some extra distance to cover when aiming onto your opponent. With all that being said, it is up to you to recognize where you struggle as a player. If you don't already have this setting enabled and tend to frequently mess up on your double and triple edits, giving confirm edit on release a try might end up helping you out. On the other hand, if you are using confirm edit on release and you oftentimes miss your shots when editing onto an opponent, well then turning off the setting to put more of an emphasis on your crosshair placement might be best for you. There are plenty of pros out there that use each setting, so there's really not one right answer here. However, as of recently, more and more pros have been turning this setting off as they realise that crosshair placement and hitting your shots consistently matters much more than having quick and fleshy edits in competitive events. But, like we mentioned previously, this setting will vary from player to player and it's up to you to decide what works best for yourself. Alright Fortnite fam, it's that time question of the day. Since confirm edit on release has been a main topic of discussion, do you have the setting enabled or disabled? Let us know why down in the comments below. Hearing different perspectives from other players will help you make a decision on what best suits your playstyle. And hey, we might just pin the best answer. When players hear the word settings, they instantly think of their core build and edit binds. These are definitely most important, but there are still some other binds that could seriously mess you up if you have them bound in a non-optimal manner. For crouching, we recommend binding it to a key that can be hit comfortably with your pinky finger. Caps lock and bottom left control seem to be the most popular, but some players do prefer to use C and hit it with their thumb instead. For your inventory slots, we recommend sticking mainly to the number keys. Pretty much everybody can hit numbers 1 through 5 comfortably, so there's not much of a need to get fancy with this. However, you can also use a W row key like R or Q for your shotgun slot for quick access if needed. For your mantle setting, we do recommend the option where you only need to hold your spacebar down. The opposing option of holding down W can easily be activated by mistake and this can get you into trouble. For your use keybind, we're once again going to be taking advantage of the scroll wheel. When scroll wheel up is bound for this, you'll be able to pick up items instantly and win those 50-50s off spawn. Each scroll wheel upwards is basically the equivalent of spamming the bind key five times rapidly. Finally, for your inventory bind, you just want to choose something that you can hit quickly but won't misclick. Bottom left control or upper left tab seems to be a favorite among the pros. Well, that wraps things up for today, Fortnite fam. Did you enjoy the video? Be sure to leave a like and ring that bell to stay up to date with all the latest and greatest tips and tricks that we have to offer. Also, feel free to leave a comment and let us know if there is anything you would be interested in learning more about. At the end of the day, there's only so much you can improve if your settings are holding you back. Hopefully, after today's video, you were able to find a comfortable set of binds to grind the new season with. And if you're a controller player, don't worry, because we'll have a video for you coming out very soon. Once again, my name is Matt, and I'll see you in our next video here 
at ProGuides.